poor and weak boy accidentally becomes the leader of the strongest ninja clan. Itoki is a regular middle school student who leads a relatively normal life with his childhood friend, Kosu. He spends most of his time studying and participating in various extracurricular activities to prepare for his future. One day, he finds a love letter in his locker at school and is immediately filled with excitement. He meets with the girl who admires him, Satomi, and she asks him to become her boyfriend. Although his overprotective mother, Yumika, is against it, Itoki decides to go on a date with her. When they arrive at Satomi's place, Itoki is nervous and unsure of what she wants to do. Suddenly, Satomi takes off her clothes and gets on top of him. Itoki pushes her away and checks under the bed to see if there's someone waiting to prank him. To his surprise, he sees a ninja under the bed, and Satomi attacks him with a kunai and kicks him. More ninjas appear, and she prepares to kill him. Fortunately, a kunai flies through the window, creating an ominous smoke screen, and Kosu appears to save Itoki. She throws him out of the window, and she fights the ninjas herself. Itoki runs into the city, where he desperately asks a police officer for help. But before the officer can say a word, a ninja appears and slits his throat. More ninjas follow and attack him, trying to capture him. But his uncle, Takasada arrives, asking him casually how his date went. With a wave of his hand, he commands the officer to stop playing dead. He then gears up and prepares for the fight. Takasada fights the ninjas as fast as he can with his unmatched lightning speed, before taking Itoki back to the car with Kosu. He tells Itoki to get out and head up the stairs on the hill, calling it his family home. When they arrive, Itoki is surprised to find a grand mansion. Yumika shows up, greeting everyone with a bow and telling Itoki to call her chief. Yumika is the leader of the Iga village, one of many ninja clans that have blended into society. They have been following strict rules to maintain balance and peace for decades. Unfortunately, their rival village, Koga, has been trying to take over Iga, and it was them who attacked Itoki. They are determined to take his life as he is the successor of the Iga ninja village. Meanwhile at Koga, their substitute village chief, Kaido, has declared that they will take revenge on the Iga ninjas for the death of their clan chief, Kishinmaru. Yumika is deeply concerned and insists Itoki to become a ninja to ensure his safety. He feels reluctant and doesn't believe in the ninja story they're telling him. However, his uncle Takasada takes him outside and gives him a stern warning, either become a ninja or die. Takasada reveals to him that his father was once the village chief before he passed away. Yumika then took up the mantle to become the leader and protect their village. Overwhelmed with emotion, Itoki sheds tears as he realizes the burden his mother faces alone. Determined not to abandon her, he agrees to become a ninja too. The next morning, Riaya informs Itoki that he has been accepted to attend the Kokuta Ninja Academy, the only ninja school in Japan sanctioned by the National Ninjutsu Security Measures Committee. She explains that 70 years ago, a major war in the ninja world led to the formation of the NSC to prevent future conflicts between villages. To be accepted into the academy, Itoki must pass a strict admission exam. On the day of the exam, Itoki and Kosu are surprised to find out that the exam location is owned by the Koga clan. They enter the exam room and see other students, along with a man who explains the test, hide and seek. The hider will leave first and hide somewhere in the service area. A minute later, the seeker will have to find the hider within 10 minutes or be disqualified. While Kosu is quick to find her hider, Itoki's target is Satomi, the same crazy girl from before. As he searches for her, Takasada takes out a Koga ninja who is attempting to kill him. Kosu warns him that other Koga ninjas are around too, so he must stay on guard. She and Takasada promise to help and protect him. Suddenly, another ninja tries to attack Itoki from afar, but Kosu steps in and follows the ninja into the bathroom and finds out that it's Satomi. She immediately engages in combat, but Satomi escapes and goes to chase after Itoki. Itoki has to act fast to uncover his hider, so he grabs a fire extinguisher and sprays it while screaming fire. This triggers the anti-fire system, revealing Satomi, who was attempting to attack him. Satomi continues to charge at Itoki, but Kosu kicks her away. Out of nowhere, the NSC ninja appear and apprehend Satomi, quickly whisking her away. Itoki wants to tag her, but the examiner informs him that time has already run out since he activated the sprinklers. When he is asked why he chose to damage the property instead of finding another way to uncover the optical camouflage, Itoki realizes that he wanted to protect the people and keep them out of danger. He fails the test, but he's still chosen among the students who passed. Meanwhile, Hayato, the captain of NSC, is sent to Koga's clan to inform them that Satomi, Kaido's daughter, 
has been arrested for attempted murder. Kaido explains that she betrayed the clan a month ago, so that's good news. However, as Hayato leaves, he receives a call about Satomi, who has ended her life. At the Iga's house, Yumika panics when Takasada informs her that Koga has infiltrated the academy, and the NSC, and even their family. Itoki, accompanied by Kosu, arrives at the Kokuten Ninja Academy to begin his journey towards becoming a ninja. As soon as he steps off the train, he notices a girl and can't help but stare at her. The girl, Ryoko, notices him and introduces herself. Soon after, Ryoko leaves with her friends, and Itoki bumps into some guys from the Koga clan who seem hostile towards him. Just as a confrontation seems imminent, a girl named Kairi appears and pretends to know Itoki taking him away from the situation. Kairi explains that those guys are elite Koga ninjas and offers to be friends with Itoki, who agrees. The school principal, Juzen, welcomes the students and reminds them of the three ninja principles. Do not be discovered, do not kill, and do not betray. However, Juzen also emphasizes that if any of these principles are broken and not discovered, then it's okay. Kairi, who is also starting her first day of school, is surprised to find that she is in the same class as Itoki. During their lunch break, Kairi tells them what to get for lunch so as not to upset the Koga boys. But Itoki is confused and looks over at them, causing one of the Koga members, Himura, to get mad and assume that Itoki is trying to start something. Thankfully, Suzaku, another Koga ninja, manages to calm Himura down and explains to Itoki that Kishinmaru, a great leader who was trying to make peace with all the villages, was recently killed by Iga. Suzaku vows that Koga will take revenge. Later on, the students have field training where the classes are combined. Kamanami, their teacher, talks about ninja suits and ninja cores, which Itoki has never heard of before. She explains that they need to get to the roof of the tower on the next island and bring back one manju from the principal who is eating them up there. They have limited time to do so. Itoki manages to activate his suit by copying Kost's suit, but he finds that he is unable to move in it. Ryoko appears and helps him adjust the suit to his strengths, as she is from the Sega clan, which specializes in ninja tools. When he's set, Itoki gets excited and accidentally falls off a cliff. Fortunately, he lands safely, thanks to the suit, which is powered by the ninja core. Ryoko warns him to be careful not to damage it, as it will cause the suit to lose power. Together, they begin sprinting towards the island. On the bridge connecting the islands, they meet Suzaku, who tries to attack Itoki. However, Kosu quickly appears and blocks Suzaku's attack, allowing Itoki and Ryoko to continue. When they reach the island, Itoki notices something and tells Ryoko to go ahead without him. He finds Kairi, who has been attacked by Koga and had her core broken. She tells him what happened, and Itoki decides to confront them as they try to pick on another student. He tries to attack Himura, but Himura dodges and knocks him into a wall. Realizing that Itoki is weak, they start to beat him up. He attempts to break Himura's core, but he fails and gets beaten up even more. Just when it seems that they are about to destroy him and his core, the principal arrives and stops them. Itoki returns to Kairi and gives her a manju, revealing that he got it back from Himura during their fight. He then carries her to the bridge to meet up with Ryoko who had also gone out to get her manju. Itoki knows that he must get his own manju, so he leaves Kairi with Ryoko, asking her to look after her. Itoki reaches the top of the tower and sees that there is only one manju left. Juzen then says that a shinobi must have both a blade and a heart, and proceeds to eat the last manju because Itoki has neither, thus failing the test. The next day at lunch, Itoki notices that everyone is avoiding him. Imura and the other Koga students have been threatening anyone who talks to Itoki. However, Kosu tells him not to pay attention to them. They sit down together with Kairi and Ryoko. Itoki and his friends are in a tight spot as they only have two days left to prepare for their written test on ninja tools. Knowing that Itoki failed his last test, Ryoko, the daughter of the Sega leader, offers to help him prepare. Together with Kosu and Kairi, they form a study group to prepare for the test. However, Kairi reveals that they don't actually have to study, they just need to steal the answers that Kamanami has hidden away. If they're caught, they'll fail. Ryoko, being an expert in ninja tools, knows just how to get the job done. Two other students join Itoki's group after being impressed by his bravery. That night, they sneak into Kamanami's office to steal the answers. Itoki locates the safe and key using a shuriken-like drone, but Kamanami hears them and pursues them. Kairi decides to act as a decoy and draws Kamanami away while the rest of the group gets the answers and escapes. The next day, Kamanami starts the test, 
but they soon realize that the answers have been switched. Humira, a Koga ninja, is laughing on the other side. He knew that they wouldn't catch on before they got the answers. As a penalty for failing the test, Itoki and his friends are assigned cleaning duty, but Ryoko still helps them out despite passing the test. While they clean, Kosu approaches Itoki and tells him that there must be a traitor in their midst. It was likely Koga who switched the answers, and someone must have told them their plan. Meanwhile, Hayato receives the autopsy results of Satomi and reads that a mysterious chip has been found in her brain. It was the end of the term, and Kaminami had gathered all the students to inform them of the joint practical exam to be conducted by all the classes. But there was a catch. Every year, the exam resulted in injuries, and sometimes, even deaths. The group discussed their plan to pass the test. But Itoki and Kosu were not part of it as they had a different mission, to uncover the traitor. To aid Itoki in his mission, Ryoko gave him Sega's latest disguise ninja tool, which could disguise his whole body and even his voice when used with a ninja suit. Meanwhile, Kosu had her own plan. She was convinced that Koga would make a move during the exam and wanted to take down Suzaku. But Itoki was against it, fearing for Kosu's life. She argued that such was the life of a ninja, but this only angered Itoki, who stormed out for a walk. Outside, he met Juzen, who invited him for tea, and Manju. Itoki started to question if ninjas were merely killers and if his father died because he was a ninja. Juzen told him that he wasn't the first person to ask that, as Koga's former leader and his father had asked the same thing. The next day, Kusetsu trained with Itoki, preparing him for the exam ahead. They drew up several plans to take down Suzaku and threw them away when done. But someone took them out of the trash, leading to the mouse getting caught in the trap. As the exam began, the Koga headed towards Itoki's location, but they were ambushed and knocked unconscious. Turning to the traitor, Itoki and Kusetsu thanked him for his help, as they knew he would give Koga their plan and use it against them. The student revealed that he had no choice. His village was threatened to be crushed if he didn't obey. Kusetsu then went to face Suzaku while the traitor informed Himura. Himura was shocked to learn that the traitor was actually Itoki in disguise. However, Himura was also using a disguise and was, in fact, Suzaku. Suzaku chased after Itoki, landing several blows. But Itoki refused to give in to death, knowing that if he did, the cycle of revenge would continue, leading to more suffering. Itoki knew he had to act fast as Suzaku was hot on his trail. He tossed a smoke bomb, creating a diversion. Suzaku began throwing kunais, trying to hit his target. Itoki, however, was quick on his feet and managed to avoid most of them. In a daring move, Itoki lunged at Suzaku, taking him by surprise. Itoki struck hard, destroying Suzaku's ninja core. As the bell rang, Itoki collapsed, completely spent from the intense battle. Itoki's friends anxiously waited by his side in the infirmary. They breathed a sigh of relief when he finally opened his eyes. But the next day, Kairi warns Itoki that his kind heart may one day get him into trouble. Meanwhile, Kairi meets with Suzaku and confronts him about the missing students. But Suzaku simply tells her to stay put and do as he says. Without hesitation, Kairi agrees to do anything for him, calling him master. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.